All right, welcome back, folks. That was Tiger that just walked by. We're working on a uh, Riggs and Stratton generator, a uh, storm responder. You see the information there on it. It won't crank, won't start. Fuels went bad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt to clean the carburetor. And I'm not gonna do a full rebuild on it, just a cleaning first. So some of the tools you're gonna need, you're gonna need a, I believe a 7 16 7 16 socket, a 5 30 second socket, flathead screwdriver, and some pliers. First thing we want to do is make sure the fuel valve is off, which it is. Next, we're going to remove that fuel hose or fuel fuel line clamp, excuse me. Wiggle it out the way. Kind of twist on that fuel line a little bit. Don't, don't break the, the valve there. All right. Next, we're gonna pull the air cleaner cover off. you got your inner air cleaner housing that's going to take that 7 16 ratchet there yeah this fuel these days with the ethanol just don't last I did have fuel stabilizer in it uh, it's been probably sitting a little bit too long even with that so I did check we do have spark on the uh, on the ignition so it's not that so turn the choke all the way to the full choke position and you look on the top of your air cleaner cover it tells you so rotate it all the way to the to the right and pull straight up and that handle ought to pop out. Actually, I might lie to you on the positioning of that. Thing. Nope, nope. All the way to the right, full choke. It'll pull straight up. Once we got that out the way, pull that cover. It's got a breather hose attached, so just gently set it out the way. Next, we're going to use that 532nd socket. Let's get these carburetor bolts undone. If you look on top of the carburetor, you have that real tiny, I don't know if you can see it under there, there's a real tiny, looks like a wire, that's the governor cable, and then a the top one here, that's your throttle control. There's your, thin one is your governor. All right, so. We'll have to hook those back in the same spot when we're done with this. All right. So I'm going to set the phone right here for a second. I'm hoping y'all can still see. If you can't, I apologize. I'm just disconnecting those two. Those two cables there, or control arms. All right, here's your carburetor off the off the engine. We're going to take it over into the garage and put it on the workbench. Bear with me just a second. All 
Okay. To get this thing apart, we're gonna leave the fuel line on it just to make it a little quicker. We're gonna remove the bowl. It's got two screws, Phillips head or flat head that hold that sucker in place. It's gonna leak a little bit of fuel. I'll set it out to, off to the side for just a second. All right, you see I got that. Okay. All right. So what you're seeing here, oh, you were seeing your float that just fell off. That's your float. Part of your diaphragm assembly. And of course, then out your bowl. So, in order to clean one of these things, you're gonna have to get to use carburetor cleaner like I've got in the background here. And you need to spray it in each of these holes, these venturis throughout here. I say not all of them are actually venturis, but You'll spray it in each of those and look all over this thing for other areas inside inside this throat of this carburetor. There might be a small venturi or two that needs to be sprayed. On the choke side, you've got several more here. So what we're gonna do And then of course over here, you're spraying inside this thing. When you get done spraying all that, you need to be mindful that when you're shooting that high pressure carb cleaner that it could squirt back on you and hit you in the eye. So you need to wear safety goggles when doing this. Anyway, when you're done spraying, you think you've got all the holes sprayed out, come back with the high pressure air from your air compressor, uh, use a fine tip nozzle and come back and hit it with air as well. And hopefully that'll do it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to stop the video and we're going to resume on a part two. And I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to do some spraying and uh, show you where all I've hit it with. And we're going to come back with the air and reassemble it and uh, put it back together and see if it runs. There's a little gasket here. So anyway, how this works, this is positioned correctly. This would be actually sitting inside this bowl. And it's positioned correctly how it would be on the machine. As, as the fuel fills up in the bowl through gravity, it makes this float rise up and it shuts, shuts the fuel supply off controlling what you call a needle, needle and seats underneath there. And I'll take that apart as well and show you real quick. Gently remove this little gasket O-ring. Pull that little axle out. And if you can look, you can see the needle coming out. So anyway, your seat is inside here. Right inside that hole down in there. And then your needle, which is this, it's got a rubberized tip. Like I say, whenever your bowl begins to fill all the way up, the float rises, forcing this rubber tip into that hole, preventing more excess fuel from coming in. And that's how that works. So you'll gently clean this stuff out as where there's another hole or venturi here that you'll spray on both sides. So when you're doing this carb cleaning, I make it a point to clean even the outside of the carburetor just to get it, make sure we're doing everything we can. And it's important to look over this entire thing because there are holes all over the place, holes, venturis. And it's especially on the smaller ones, what I'm calling the vent venturi holes that you're gonna to need to focus on because those are the ones that can get clogged the easiest. So with that being said, like I say, I'm gonna pause the video in a minute. Uh, I am gonna do a little pre-cleaning on this thing just so the second video is not so long and we could get it back together and, and running. 
So stay tuned. Be looking for part two.